What's your favourite scary movie franchise? It might be one of the ones with an iconic main antagonist and way too many sequels like Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street or Child's Play, or you might prefer something a bit more tasty and weird like Hellraiser or Phantasm. But for me, without a doubt, it's gotta be Evil Dead. Home to some of the most creative and bizarre horror filmmaking out there, all with a healthy serving of stupidity and Bruce Campbell abuse. So let's take a quick look at the OG3, The Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, and Army of Darkness to celebrate what makes this franchise so groovy. The original Evil Dead was the result of a 20 year old Sam Raimi and his friends sourcing a budget from local investors by showing them a short film they'd made and spending that money torturing themselves and the rest of a crew in a cabin in the woods for a lengthy production time. The hellish filming experience bleeds through into the final project, which has a very individual, grueling and difficult feel to it. Bruce Campbell particularly spends a large amount of the film covered in a sickly fake blood substitute which couldn't possibly be comfortable and the actors playing the Deadites give disturbing and inhuman performances, possibly thanks to the white contact lenses they had to wear, which weren't only actually dangerous, but also rendered the actors completely blind. It's this insanely amateurish way of operation that gives the film its charm and identity. Everyone here is shooting real guns, breaking real glass, and getting hit in the face by Raimi's homemade shaky cam. The mountain tension and discomfort mirrors the working conditions, but luckily, everyone pushed through the production and gave us a defining moment in horror and independent movie history. Highlights of the first Evil Dead are the eerie swing seat that pops up before all the weird stuff starts happening, the deadite downstairs bang bang banging away, and all of that last 30 minutes as Ash descends into utter insanity with the aggressive camera work and that awesome stop motion sequence near the end. From what's been said, it doesn't seem like Raimi was initially interested in making an Evil Dead sequel, but when his second film Crime Wave ended up being a bit of a disaster, a smart career decision was made and he returned to what he knew worked. Evil Dead 2 however shows a different side of Raimi's sensibilities. While the first film does have moments that feel funny in retrospect, it was most definitely intended to put the audience through the grinder. However, the sequel, co-written with Scott Spiegel, is intentional horror comedy at its finest. This works so well in Evil Dead 2 as it manages the balance perfectly. It seems to function on a formula of horror and concept and comedy and execution. Like how Ash being attacked by his headless dead girlfriend and later having to dismember his possessed hand are both very disturbing things to think about, but by using the zany camera moves and the cartoonish special effects, it becomes weirdly funny. And on top of that, the abuse of Bruce is increased exponentially. He does some incredible stunt falls and flips that are literally insane to see, and it seems that Sam took whatever opportunity he could to hit him, force him to hit himself, or cover him in a tidal wave of blood. Evil Dead 2 has one of my favourite long takes in film history. It just gets longer and longer and more absurd the more rooms that Bruce crashes through to the point where you just keep laughing and laughing. The second half of the film, where Ash gets company at the cabin, doesn't quite reach the height of the first half's ridiculousness in my opinion, but you've still got to admit that this has one of the best out of nowhere endings ever. With Ash being pulled through time and being hailed as a prophesized hero from the sky by Raimi and Cameo and an army of medieval folk, while he screams no like Darth Vader. Army of Darkness kinda picks up from where Evil Dead 2 left off. But instead this time, there's no flying deadite for Ash to heroically gun down, so he's taken as a prisoner instead. The third iteration has yet another tonal shift as well, pretty much ditching the horror aspect and leaning even more heavily into the Three Stooges slapstick style. In fact, some of the only blood in this film is a comedically large geyser of blood that shoots out of a pit to signal there's a freakish deadite down there. And this time, the deadites are much weaker. Full body dismemberment is no longer necessary, and the few deadites going around go down pretty effortlessly to the chainsaw or the shotgun. While I'm very much more of an Evil Dead 2 enjoyer and that blend of horror comedy, Army of Darkness still works for me. While the deadites are replaced with a skeleton army for the most part, this climaxes into an awesome siege set piece, and the individual scenes of Ash fighting all the evil shit he encounters are still all fun and memorable. 
But the most important thing Army of Darkness does by far is giving us the definitive Ash Williams. After all the nonsense that this boy has canonically been through, he's absolutely done and he doesn't care to the point that he just wants to go home. Cocky asshole Ash is the best Ash, and it allows him to double down on the witty and cheesy action hero one-liners, despite them clashing with his almost zero brain cells. Good. Bad. I'm the guy with the gun. After that, Evil Dead was stagnant on the movie side for quite a while, until there was eventually a remake or a reboot type sequel thing or whatever this one counts as. This and the recent Evil Dead Rise both fit into a more serious horror style and kind of feel similar to the original but with proper production values. That dims the charm a little bit if you like me and like the OG for its low budget scrappiness, but these two are good and deserve love, just this isn't the place they're gonna get it. There is one other major part of the franchise's life though. Ash vs Evil Dead. There's three seasons of this and somehow every episode is of a consistently high quality and it often sits somewhere between the tones of Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness, which works great, especially as it has the best of both worlds. It has Army of Darkness's Ash, aged up quite a bit but still packing some punchy one-liners, and it has Evil Dead 2's score and tone. In fact, some scenes go so far beyond the line that I consider okay that I can assure you that I don't think anyone asked for them. Ash vs Evil Dead should be experienced as blind as possible for all fans, so I'm going to stop talking about it, but it is a perfect revival of the original trilogy. But that's pretty much it, about how a bunch of 20-somethings created horror's best franchise, revolutionised indie filmmaking, and made one of the funniest films of all time. Makes you feel a little disheartened, right? Well it shouldn't, it's meant to be inspirational. All you need is a shotgun, a chainsaw, and a cabin to kill a bunch of people in. Swallow this.